Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of The Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Texas Hill Country Fishing Report with Greg Wielander of Upstream on the Fly. How you doing, Greg? Well, hi Marvin, I'm, I'm doing well. It's, uh, it's a hot one here in Texas. Yeah, dry heat or not, I looked at your weather and you've been above the century mark for a while, but I, I also know uh, a little birdie told me you've been playing hooky and you haven't been in Texas. I, I have not. You know, I have uh, spent the last uh, two weeks up in Ohio. Um, you know, for some of the folks that know me, I have a, a son that lives up there and, and his wife, and um, I'm a I'm a grandfather. Um, I've got a five year old grandson. Time has gone by fast, you know, um, and uh, we try to get together, you know, a couple times a year. And uh, with the COVID in place, that did not happen, you know, in our spring. Um, and my grandson's starting kindergarten coming up. So um, he's not going to have a luxury of being able to visit as often as, as we used to. So uh, my wife and I got on an airplane southwest and and flew up to ohio and um i have to say it was i was impressed i mean there, there was nobody i mean it was there's act, i'm around more people when i go to the local heb grocery store or lowe's than when i went to an airport and got an airplane so um it was strange times wore my mask did all the precautionary things always washed my hands but um what i want to talk about though is fishing right Ended up spending like five or six days on the water with my son and grandson and our wives. You know, we, we did some kayak floats, um, chased the smallmouth. And I was impressed by um, the quality of smallmouth there in the Ohio area. Um, and I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of addiction, you know, fishing is an addiction, you know, it's a passion, of course, but um, smallmouth period is is, is an amazing fish. Um, you know, I'm fortunate to live in central Texas and chase the Guadalupe bass, which I like better than say the largemouth um, for their fighting abilities. Right. And um, we don't have a lot of smallmouth in our streams due to the Guadalupe bass. Um, back in you know the seventies, they used to stock smallmouth until they realized that there's a fish called the Guadalupe bass that would, um, would mate with the uh, smallmouth and the Guadalupe. So the only smallmouths we have in Texas are in our bigger lakes and reservoirs. And especially as you work your way north in North Texas, you know, all the various lakes up there, Lake Texoma is a good smallmouth, Lake Whitney. Um, even Canyon Lake has smallmouth, which, is, you know, comes out of the dam, the Guadalupe, which is a trout fishery. However, they weren't able to kill the smallmouth in Canyon Lake and they reproduce on their own. So there's plenty of smallmouth and Canyon to chase, but where I'm headed with this, I was able to fish smallmouth bass in streams, um, from, from a kayak, which, you know, fly fishing from kayaks isn't the easiest thing to do, but the rivers, um, are all fairly shallow. And then you have deep pools, um, that are probably six to seven feet that hold the smallmouth. So I had a good time. I enjoyed being away from hundred degree, heat um they do have humidity since that is the ohio river basin you know when you have kentucky and ohio and all the states that border that river valley um, there's a lot of humidity in the air um, based on wind directions of course and and rain and and such but um it was i think that yesterday when i flew back to texas it was 66 and raining um but the days we were out and about it was in the low 80s mid mid 80s of course with some humidity it it felt warmer than that but um i'm ready to go back and do some more smallmouth fishing especially as my my grandson grows you know he's five years old and and he's got a push button rod that i bought him and he's making casts on his own of course it's a bobber and worm but uh i've already got a fly rod for him one of the rods that had been on the market uh, a while back that no longer is made, you know, and it was designed for children um, through um, Tyler Beavis and his dad um, had a really cool designed rod that was being marketed. Um, and I had bought one because um, I can't wait to get my grandson into fly fishing. 
but I wanted him to learn about fishing. I wanted to learn about angling, and that's what I've been doing. Yeah, it's really neat, too, and I'd say I love smallmouth fishing. I think, you know, the only thing I can think of that compares to is probably spring turkey hunting. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, smallmouth and spring turkey hunting. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of states in the U.S., especially the Midwest and over uh, in your area, Marvin, where you live on the on the east, you know, North Carolina and Virginia, there's a lot of good smallmouth fisheries over there as well. And um, it's uh, it's fun. It, it's it's pretty cool to hook up with a fish and, and it's pulling you around in in in, the, in your kayak. And uh, you're wondering if you're going to land it. And there were a lot of fish lost this past week. Um, I kind of thought we would probably go fish one or twice one or two times and I was on the water six times in 12 days up in Ohio. And, um, you know, my son and, and my grandson were just eating that stuff up. They really were enjoying it. And my, you know, my son is, um, you know, he had all the opportunity to fish his whole life and, and he did a lot of fishing with me, but he just didn't take to it like I had. Right. But now I guess being a father, he, he realizes what fishing's about. And, um, about getting out on the water and, and enjoying nature so um a lot of a lot of things i have to look forward to and i um it's unfortunate that we don't live closer so um his work took took him out of state so anyway and you come home right and it's uh you know d- totally into the oven and i guess the probably the best way to describe the kind of immediate fishing situation is it's a little grim right now in the hill country it's, it's getting dry, you know, um, at this time of year, um, I spend, you know, I have, I have clients that want to fish. I go to the San Marcos river because it's spring fed and, um, you know, the San Marcos river is not your best wade fishing river. It's, it's more watercraft driven. If it's, you do it on your own, you're, you're in a kayak, which sometimes is a little difficult to fish from, you know, you've got current and flow, um, kick boat is is thoroughly enjoyable on the san marcus river um that's really the way to do it however it's hard to do a five or ten mile float in a kick boat it's doable you can do it um i know friends that do it i've, I've done it myself but um kayaks allow you more access to the water quicker and uh you know you could quit a little quicker as well but um you know floating in water that's that's deeper is, is sometimes a little tough to fly fish from kayak but uh it's a whole nother level of angling and, and it's one that i've done for many years and uh i will, would still do it um but um generally i'm behind the oars on a raft so um but the san marcus is where it's at right now um the lano river i looked at the gauges and we're down to about 35 and 36 flow in the town of mason and the town of lano so that's not a lot of water flowing right now. And that's uh, a concern. You know, the fish are coming back in numbers on that river. However, if we don't start to get to break in, in the heat, you know, that river's going to stop flowing, which it has in the past, but hopefully we get a hurricane or, or, or some rain, right? Um, we definitely need some rain. It's, it's dry as a bone, you know, extremely fire danger right now, you know, um, as far as, being out and about if you smoke or, or or start a fire just be very aware that the surroundings are, are very dry so i'm looking forward to september you know i'm waiting for that weather change to happen so we can uh get the bass active and, and start chasing bass on on our rivers and streams and uh especially the lower colorado so we don't want a hurricane for that river we want it to stay dry so the Colorado will fish the best during the drought. And uh, we're currently kind of in a drought right now. So I'm looking for September, definitely, definitely October, and November to be strong months for the lower Colorado and uh, going after some big bass. Well, there you go. And, you know, folks, we love questions at the Articulate Fly. If you send them to us, you can email them to us. You can send them to us with a DM on our Facebook or Instagram page. If we read your question, I'll send you some Articulate Fly swag, and you're going to get into a drawing for some cool stuff uh, from Greg and the brands that he reps at the end of the season. And before I uh, let you go, Greg, and uh, finish unpacking from your vacation, uh, why don't you let folks know uh, where they can find you so they can uh, 
book you and fish with you when the heat breaks? Yes, uh, my website, upstreamonthefly.com. And then you can also find me on social media under Upstream on the Fly on both Instagram and Facebook. Well, there you go. And folks, stay cool and stay safe and get out there and catch a few if you can. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Greg. Thanks, Marvin. Thanks, Marvin.